This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Envato provides over 1 million digital assets such as graphic elements, stock footage, fonts, music and much more. So if you're interested, I have provided a link down below in the description which will take you to their website and of course if you do decide to register, I get to earn a commission. Now in today's tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how to create stretched text animations. As you can see, I've created two examples and the difference between the two is that the first one is fluid and has a smooth animation, while the second one has this stop motion sort of look to it. Now I've gone ahead and created two timestamps which you can skip to depending on the type of animation you're interested in, but I would recommend that you go through the entire tutorial because even if you've been using After Effects for a long time, you might still pick up something new here and there. With all that said, let's jump right in and get started. Alright, so here we are now in After Effects and we're gonna start off by creating a new composition by going up to Composition, New Composition, but you can also see that you can use the shortcut Ctrl plus N. So let's click on that. Let's leave it at 1080p, frame rate of 30 seems fine and uh, let's make it 10 seconds and hit OK. Now let's go ahead and grab the text tool up here, Ctrl plus T if you're using shortcuts and let's click and drag and let's just type something like bad. In order to center this, you can use the align panel over here, or you can use the shortcut Control alt home to center the anchor point first, and then Control home to center the text to the center of the composition. But again, if you have it over here, you can center it horizontally by just clicking this button, and then vertically by clicking this button. Now before we move on to the next step, just make sure you have the final design set. So if you want to change your font, or you want to change your spacing or scale or whatever, make sure you do that and you're all set before you move on to the next step, which is converting our text to a shape layer. Let's right click. You can also use create masks from text if that's something you want, but shapes allow us more different options, whereas masks limit us in what we can do. Let's go ahead and click create shapes from text. And as you can see now, if we zoom in, a new layer has been created, which is a shape layer. And if we drop down, you can see the contents for each letter. So you got B, you got stroke fill, transform for each of these letters. And now if we click G, the points will appear. And then we can click on one point and then click back on V to bring up the select tool. And now we can select multiple points at a time. Also, say you have these points selected and you want to add to the selection, just hold down shift and click and drag. So you can see that adds to the selection. Now before we move on to the animation part, let's go down that list and let's just look at some of these options here. So we got stroke which is turned off, we got the fill which is on, so if we turn that off the letter disappears and then we can turn the stroke back on, so you can see what that does. And then you can go down on the stroke and control the width. This is what I was saying when I was talking about the difference between the mask and the shape layer. The shape layer allows us much more control to like tweak the look of the text. But let's go ahead and turn the fill back on and then take a look at the transform. You can use these to control each letter individually. You got the position, you can see the anchor point here. So if we rotate, it's going to rotate around that point and then control Z to undo. If we tweak the anchor point to be at the center of the letter, for example, we can rotate around that point. So with those properties out of the way, we can now move on to the animation part. Now before we drop down every list and click on the path, what we can do is select the layer and then go up here to the search bar and type in path and this will bring up every path property within the layer itself. So we can quickly just click and drag down and this will allow us to set a keyframe for each of these paths. Hold alt and then scroll wheel to like zoom in the composition and then click and drag these maybe to like frame 20 and this is going to be our final position and then we can go back to frame 0 and now we can go ahead and animate these letters to come in from the right side. So let's click G on the keyboard and zoom in. Let's start with the D letter. What we can do is just select the entire D letter, bring it all the way over here and what we can do now is select only these points. So what that allows us to do is by clicking and dragging, also you can hold down shift to snap it horizontally. We can just drag it like this, so it stretches. There you go, on with the next letter. Now since I'm using the Gotham font, you can see that the letter A only has one point here at the top. That is not gonna allow us to actually stretch it because it's only one point. So what we can do, press G again to bring up the pen tool and just add a point over here and then just move it into position. It doesn't really matter if you can't match it perfectly, just use the arrow keys to have more control over it. And now by holding down shift, as we mentioned before, we can click on these points. And since we have that point as well selected, the point we created, we can simply just drag to the right side. So maybe kind of like that. 
it doesn't really matter if we overlap the letters because we're going to shift the timing so that the B letter will come in first, the A second and the D letter will come in last. So let's move on to the B letter now. Click and drag so you can select all of these points on the right side. And then again, by holding down shift, just click and drag like this. And now you can select the entire letter and just bring it over. So now let's go over to this frame and click end to bring up the work area end and then just click zero to ramp preview. As you can see, we got a pretty weird looking animation. So let's go ahead and fix that by messing around with the timing and the ease of the keyframes. Before we do anything else, let's select all of these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, right click again, keyframe velocity, and let's set the incoming and outgoing velocity to 75%. And this is going to allow us to have this more impactful kind of motion. But again, the letters are overlapping. So let's bring these A and D letter keyframes over. You can also make these animations faster. So there you go, by playing around with the timing and the ease of the keyframes, messing around, making it more random, like the B letter comes in faster, the A letter comes in maybe slower, the D letter keyframes are like starting from the same point as the B letter, but they take almost twice as long. There you go, you got the stretched text animation. Moving on, we're going to take a look at how we can create the second example that I showed you at the beginning of this video. Now I've already gone ahead and created a new composition. So let's move on, create a new text. So click and drag. Let's type in fear, control alt home to center the anchor point and then control home to center the text to the composition itself. Now again, before you move on and create shapes from text, just make sure you have the final design set and then right click create shapes from text. Now let's go down the drop list and go to contents. And you can see we have all the same properties as before. Now for this one, we're going to use stroke instead of fill. So what we can do is just type in stroke width, and then we can turn on the stroke for each of these and make the stroke width to maybe about 1.5. Then you can copy that control C, and then control V to paste it on each one. But also we need to turn off the fill. So type in fill and then turn that fill off for each of these letters. Let's make the quality full so we can see that better. And there you go. You have an outline text. Let's move straight over to the path. Set a keyframe for each of these letters. Again, let's move them over to frame 20. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to use hold keyframes. And just to demonstrate what hold keyframes do, click G to bring up the points, click V to select all of these and just bring them over to the right side. Normally, you would have the fear text just come in from the right side. But when we select all of these, right click toggle hold keyframe, what you can see is the position won't change until you hit that certain keyframe in between nothing happens. And then as soon as you hit that keyframe, it just snaps to this position. This gives us control over the design of each frame. This way you can have more powerful frames across the entire animation. Also, we're going to get that unique kind of stop motion look since we're going to be animating in two. So every two frames, we're going to set a keyframe. So let's go ahead and start with the F letter. And in the original animation, what I did is I animated from the end towards the beginning. So let's go over by two frames and let's just delete these for now. And what we can do is focus on one letter at a time. So click G to bring up the pen tool again and then click V to select these points. Select this top part and just bring us all the way up out of frame and then go back by two frames again. Now we can select these bottom points and just bring them maybe halfway here. And then another two points all the way at the top where we can't see them. And then another two points. We can maybe have these over here, move back, maybe over here, and then move back and just get them off of frame. You can see these do animate, but we just have to select them, toggle, hold keyframe. And let's just bring these all the way back at the beginning. And now we can hit zero to RAM preview. I think we have to add another keyframe here in between so that it doesn't just jump from all the way at the top to the bottom. So maybe drag this over and then here in between, we can have these top parts just come in like this, maybe even two more frames, get them even closer, and then they snap. Preview that again. Now let's go ahead and animate the other letters. As I said before, I animated these in twos, which means I set a keyframe every two frames and also made sure to have the keyframes overlap with each other like this. So everything is lined up perfectly. Now, one more thing I did in the original example is I added these trails to the text. And the way we can do that is by clicking on the layer, control D to duplicate, or you can go up to edit, duplicate. And then with this selected, go up to the search bar, type in fill and turn on the fill for each of these letters, then type in stroke to turn it off. And then we can duplicate this 
and set this bottom one as an alpha inverted. So that means whatever is within these letters is not going to be shown. But now we're just going to go over and shift it by one frame. And this way we can see the previous frame showing up. And since we're using an alpha inverted mat of the original letters, we're not going to be able to see the whites in the fill inside of the letters, if that makes sense. So if you press U to bring up the keyframes, you can see that each of these frames is shifted by one frame, and therefore you can see the previous frame of that animation. Now if we preview this real quick, you can see that we have this sort of like flashy look, and to be honest, it matches pretty well with the word fear itself. So there you go, two types of stretch text animations which you can use depending on what kind of project you're working on. And remember, it's important to have a certain style or design that is consistent throughout an entire project. Because if you do have multiple styles, then it really just becomes a mess. Alright guys, thanks for watching and being patient all the way through. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell button to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you want to follow my work or ask me any questions personally, then you can find me on Instagram. If you have any suggestions, then leave a comment down below. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you next time.